Here are some notes on the different types of tracheostomy tubes. There's the cuffed low pressure tube, which is probably the most commonly used, and it's the one shown up here. This is a tube with an inflatable balloon around the distal end, as shown here. You can also see this balloon down there. It's used for patients that require positive pressure ventilation because you want to be able to seal off the area around the tube before you can ventilate the lungs without having an air leak that goes around the tube. It provides airway protection against aspiration as well. So things from the esophagus up here are not able to go down into the lungs because this balloon is blocking their path. It's typically used in ICU settings and you usually have a dual cannula system for safety. So you have an outer cannula as shown here with the balloon and then an inner cannula that goes into it. It allows you to remove that inner cannula to better clean it. And usually you have the stylet like shape that goes inside that inner cannula to clear secretions from that as well. Next is uncuffed tubes. These are less commonly used. These have no inflatable cuffs. So you would have an opening here on the outside of this tube here. It's used for longer term patients who need ongoing suction and it's not suitable for positive pressure ventilation because again when you blow air into this tube it's going to leak around the outside. You'll have an air leak if you try to use it for positive pressure ventilation. Patients must have an effective cough and gag reflex because when secretions come down from the esophagus, the mouth, or the pharynx area, uh, all of that's going to leak in if there's no cuff here. Uh, these are rarely used, again, for those two reasons. You want to be able to do positive pressure ventilation and you want to provide protection against aspiration and the cuff helps with that. Next is fenestrated tubes. These tubes have like a little opening here that allow the patient to speak through that. It allows air passage through the oral and nasal pharynx through like a small hole that would be right here through a fenestration in the tube. It enables speech, as we said. Uh, it does have a higher aspiration risk and it requires a non-fenestrated inner cannula for suctioning. So you can have an inner tube that's not fenestrated if you want to suction. Now it is possible to speak using a passy muir speaking valve with a non-fenestrated tube. The passy muir valve would allow a would have one-way gas flow through their trach and the patient will have to de deflate their cuff if they're using a cuffed tube in order to speak with a passy muir valve. Lastly there's laryngectomy stoma tube. A laryngectomy uh, is when you have your complete larynx removed. You have no connection between your mouth, this area up here, down to your lungs. So you really just have an opening here that leads all the way out to your stoma. Um, this is a flexible silicon tube that maintains the stoma during the healing process, and you can have cuffed tubes for ventilation here as well, if necessary. For these patients that have a laryngectomy, you cannot intubate from the mouth or nose. If you need to breathe for the patient with a machine, you need to go through the stoma in order to get to their lungs, because this area will be blocked off.